are the framers, shapers, and ultimately the creators of all the manifested universe. So we got this one supreme energy. Man, if you ain't getting that drop, download the app, man. iTunes, Google. You get it, man. Get the streams of the radio shows live, man. Get that drop. Bunch of hives, shabbata. Get your shabbata bread. Put some avocados, put some veggies on your shabbata bread. Love the CJ battle, man. We eat, we eat avocados on shabbata bread. On the shabbat. With a shabbata. What it do, man. Yeah, we back, man. I want to get back into this Moshe, man. I don't want to let it stray too far because we got a nice flow going. And again, it was like the perfect time to revisit an old friend, man. Revisit an old story, an old priest king, an old priest king, all right? So we're coming back to life. We're checking for Moshe. We're like, man, what story are we rocking with? You know what I'm saying? Are we going to rock with the familiar story? Are we going to rock with the one that seems to connect a lot more with chronology, a lot more with orientation, and just a lot more with how we feeling right now as as we feel like all antsy and we got all this anticipation, all this stuff going on. We got these full moons and they spraying stuff on top of us. You, you're getting poisoned. It's, it's, we all going, you know what I'm saying, damn near, you know, spinning off the, <laughs> we damn near all spinning on the ball right now, you know what I mean? So we're trying to be firm, fixed, and immovable. We're trying not to be spinning with all this chaos, man. So all praise the Most High for the clarity in times like this to fall back just read a story about an old friend. With all the chaos going on, you know you can come here to the drop. We're going to read the stories. <laughs> We're going to read on you We're like a big-ass book club. Come to the drop, man. Get that drop live. Get that app like a big book club, man. And uh, just look out for us, man, because this is the flow as we spread across the plane with this vibration. You know what I mean? The vibration's been real from day one. When you're in the frequency of the 4 plus 3 plus 2 is 9, we're going to get back on that frequency drop. So you understand, man, numbers are dis are not invented. They are discovered, not invented. So if they're just discovering numbers, they're not inventing numbers. Though when you add it all up, when you're in the frequency of the nine, there's, there's a reason why when these Templars started, they started with nine Templars. There's a reason why you see nine commandments on your Lost Lunas. Lost Lunas, New Mexico, I'm talking how we cool. They had it in the nine format. You didn't miss a commandment. Those one and two are combine into one, all right? Don't put a power before your power. Don't make a graven image to do what? Put a power before your power. Then you go on to not killing and stealing and coveting people's wives and all that other stuff. But if you don't put a power before your power, that's rule number one. You don't make a graven image to do what? Worship it to put a power before your doggone power, man. That's the same transgression. So in Los Lunas, New Mexico, in Paleo Picto Hebrew, going back thousands of years, we see nine lines, and those are combined as, a, as that one first commandment, man. Don't put no energy before your source, before your energy, before your nine, before your completion. We're getting back to it. We're in chapter 78 of the book of Jasher. Hawashar, man. Just want to send out a hive to the family, all the family out there, man. Hawash Stu, K Stu, what it do? Keep on rocking, man. Keep on supporting the stewards, please, man. That's just our heartbeat, man. Keep our heartbeat pumping, man. Supporting the steward family as they grow with their beautiful baby girl, their Yapa Hadasa. Yapa, man. So keep that energy flowing to the steward family so our heartbeat can keep pumping as a tribe. Man, keep supporting everything, man, that you're doing. Just keep doing what y'all doing. Don't do nothing different. I ain't asking nothing different, man. Just keep doing what y'all doing. I appreciate the Ahab, all the comments that y'all leaving. I read them all. I love y'all. I appreciate that. It's adding to the journey. It's adding to the water, man. So let's get it. We're in the book of Hawa Shaw, chapter 78. We're going to do 78 and 79. What it do? <coughs> all right, so you already know. Go back and get that drive. Moses was the king of Kush for 40 years, man. So while everybody's going crazy, saying, Moses, what you doing? You the king of Kush. Why you over there dealing with them? Well, you got to read the whole story. You know what I mean? Before before they were jumping out of Egypt, before they were getting antsy and saying, we got to do this, we got to do this. Moses was the king of Cush for 40 years. What do you think he was here? Then he got put in jail by his father-in-law because he wanted to team up with the uh, Kushites, you know what I'm saying, or 
or the Mitzri, you know, because he thought Moses was fleeing Egypt, so he threw him in jail for 10 years. So Moses reigned as the king of Kush from 27 to what, 66 years old, going on 67. Then he gets thrown into a dungeon, not just a prison, man, a dungeon for 10 years. No food, no water. Zipporah, Zipporah, the girl that he helped at, at the well, you know, his father, his future father, you know, his father-in-law, you know what I mean? She's the one, the only one that checks on him. No Israelites check on him. Now we got family, oh man, you know. Look, don't complain about no one checking on you. Moses was in a dungeon for 10 years. Nobody checked on him, and he still got out, praised the Most High, and came and saved you. So your strength comes from you, because the Most High already put it in you. You don't have a child so that they depend on you for the rest of their lives. The Most High does not need you to depend on everything you do, got to depend on. Nah, it's already encoded in you. You got the code. You are the creator. You got it, man. You are the energy. You are the connection. There's no separation. You can have a religion if you want to. Just don't bring it to me. I don't got no separation with my breath, my frame, and my shape. You might. I don't. You know what I mean? So I don't see a separation. This is a oneness. You know what I mean? This is a, a oneness that we're building right now. You know what I mean? So you build with us. There's no separation. A wah, a wah. We're talking about our framer and our shaper. Now, Moshe is just now getting out of jail after 10 years being in the dungeon. Zipporah holds him down. She gives him food and water every day. Now he finds a crystal staff, right? To our last drop, he got a, he got a crystal staff. And we said, whoa, what's up with this crystal staff? It's just like Excalibur, right? Got a lot of great comments. Love to Jackie Anthony, man. She be holding it down, man, with the recon, man. Oh, uh, man. So, you know, we got a lot of great, you know, joints comparing this Moshe staff, this crystal staff that he had to pull out. It was planted in the garden. Somebody left a great comment, you know, said that, yeah, it was, it was planted like a, like a circuit, like it had to be grounded, like the energy had to be grounded. But only Moshe could pull it out, just like the King Arthur story, just like the King David story. Remember, David is a title. There was a David before the David you know. There was a David before the David you know. Go all the way back. Keep going back. Look to the Templar. He has a great timeline he put together. Go to the site, man, 432thedrop.com. The Templar has a great drop, man. Click on Urban Reed. And you'll see his, uh, you know, timeline, chronology. Love to hire Mark, man. I mean, they're just doing great work. Man, love to Isaac Ford, man. He's keeping us tuned up. When you get that app, you're going to see, man. Isaac Ford puts it down. If you got some songs you want to hear, something like that, or you want them spinning on the radio, hit up Isaac Ford. Isaac at 432thedrop.com. Love to tie battle. She writes a poem for us every night. We read it live on the radio, five days a week, man. Surf the wave, 10 o'clock Pacific, man. Join us, and we got all kind of shows dropping, man. We launched probably, you know, I want to say 12, 12 to 15 shows. I don't know, over the over the last uh, like two months. I don't, I don't know of any any networks that do that. But we launched about over a dozen shows in the last two months with different family in different parts of the area, Texas, Milwaukee, New York City, uh, you know what I'm saying, Colorado, everywhere in between, Cali. And they just literally just recording their shows, putting them on an MP3, sending them, dropboxing them to me. We put them on their schedule, they got their own slots, and you're gonna see how you can support their slots and support our exodus by supporting us just reading books to the community, dropping that drop to the community so we can keep building our land. So I hop to y'all, let's get it, Moshe. Chapter 78. Wow. At that time died Baal Canaan, son of Akbar, king of Edom, and was buried in his house in the land of Edom. And after his death, the children of Esau sent to the land of Edom and took from there a man who was in Edom, whose name was Hadad. And they made him king over them in the place of Baal Canaan, their king. And Hadad reigned over the children of Edom 
48 years, all right? And when he reigned, he resolved to fight against the children of Moab to bring them under the power of the children of Esau. So this is some more melanated war going on, Moab and Esau. <laughs> to bring them under the power of the children of Esau as they were before. But he was not able because the children of Moab heard this thing and they rose up and hastened to elect a king over them from amongst their brethren. So now they need a Moabite king because they're getting rolled up on by Esau. And afterward, gathered together a great people and sent to the children of Ammon their brethren for help to fight against Hadad king of Edom. And Hadad heard the thing which the children of Moab had done and was greatly afraid of them and refrained from fighting against them. In those days, Moses, Moshe, the son of Amram and Midian, took Zipporah, a daughter of Reuel, the Midianite, for a woman. And Zipporah walked in the ways of the daughters of Jacob. Zipporah walked in the ways of the daughters of Jacob. Now let's go. She was nothing short of the righteousness of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Now this is a Midianite, and we're reading right here that she's nothing short of Sarah. She ain't an Israelite though. She's a Midianite. But according to the script in the book of Joshua 78, she's nothing short in righteousness. So, you know, be slow to judge unless you know the heart and the design of Hawa. When he puts it in somebody, you might say, oh, this person ain't us, but they are nothing short of righteousness. And you better check your own seed, your own function, your own foundation. You better check your root to get to the frequency to where you're nothing short of righteousness. But if she's nothing short of righteousness, and you are short of righteousness, then that's a problem. Let's go. And she and Zipporah was nothing short of righteousness of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. And Zipporah conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Gershon. For he said, I was a stranger in a foreign land. But he circumcised not his foreskin, at the command of Reuel, his father-in-law. And she conceived again and bore a son, but circumcised his foreskin and called his name Eleazar. Eleazar, you know what I mean? Eleazar, Lazar, 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 Eleazar, Lazar, Lazar, smokeless fire. We still talking dragons and shit. We still talking dragons. Yeah, man, it's all within, you're surrounded, every, every, every wind that blows, man, every atmospheric phenomenon is Dracon flow, all right, so you got to retrain and refunction because you're living in it, you're living in the fire, the water, the ether, you're living on the land, that's all Dracon flow, now you choose your side of the war, but the, for you, you go back all the way to the beginning, you as a seed, as Nagas go back to the beginning of the flow. Why? Because you are Hawa. You are the collective. You are Hawa. You are the collective Mashiach. You collectively can free yourselves. You collectively can free yourselves. You are freeing yourselves. Look around. Is that a separation from Hawa or is it Hawa? Let's get it. So Zipporah, who's nothing short of righteousness than Sarah, <coughs> bears a son with Moshe. Right. His name is Eleazar. The first is Gershom. He's not circumcised. Eleazar is circumcised. Let's get that again. She bore a son. He called him Gershom. For I was a stranger in this foreign land. For he circumcised not his foreskin, so he didn't circumcise Gershom. Why not? 
at the command of Reuel, his father-in-law. So his father-in-law didn't want his first son circumcised. I, mean, I don't know. Let's go. And then she again bore him a son named Eleazar because Hawab, my father's, was my help. But he circumcised Eleazar. So Eleazar was circumcised. Gershom wasn't. Let's go. Verse 11. Because, the, because Hawaii, my father's, was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. The sword of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, greatly increased the labor of the children of Israel in those days and continued to make his yoke heavier upon the children of Israel. And he ordered a proclamation to be made in Mitzrayim, saying, Give no more straw to the people to make bricks with. Let them go and gather themselves straw as they can find it. So before, remember, he was putting the babies, every brick they were short, he would take an infant and use that as bricks, and they would hear their babies crying in the wall, right? Now he's going to make it harder for them to even get the bricks by saying, go find your own straw to get your own bricks. And if you're show, you know what I mean? So that's just the furthest level of evil, you know what I mean? You could possibly, you know, conceive if they find it. Also the tale, the tale of bricks which they shall make, let them give each day and diminish nothing from them for they are idle in their work. And the children of Israel heard this, and they mourned and sighed, and they cried unto Hawa on account of the bitterness of their souls. And Hawa heard the cries of the children of Israel. He heard the, the cries of the children collectively, right? Come on. Collective Mashiach, collective. He heard the cries of the children of Israel, saw the oppression with which Mitzrayim oppressed them, and Hawa was jealous of his people and his inheritance and heard their voice. And he resolved to take them out of the affliction of Mizraim to give them land, the land of Canaan for a possession. All right. Now this is some small print right here. It says, Hawa appears to Moshe and commands him to go down to Mitzrayim to deliver Israel. All right, so let's go. 79, in those days, Moshe was feeding the flock of Reuel, or Jethro, the Midianite, his father-in-law, beyond the wilderness of sin. And the stick, the stick, remember the crystal stick, the crystal staff, the crystal sword, let's go, which he took from his father-in-law was in his hand. Remember this crystal staff, in uh, chapter 75, it says this is the same crystal staff or stick or sword that Adam used to till the ground. So it was given to Adam right after creation. Adam used it to till the ground, pass it to Abraham, he passed it to Isaac, Jacob, and then Jacob passed it to Joseph. Then it was stolen by the Egyptians from Joseph. So then somehow Jethro gets it from these Egyptians that stole it. He plants it in his garden. Now, what side of this thing Rebuel is on, I don't know, man. He put Moses in jail for 10 years, but then he did free him, though. I guess he had to change of heart. But well, let's go. I mean, 10 years is 10 years. I don't know, man. Let's go, man. Moses is, Moses is mighty forgiving. You know, he's mighty forgiving. You know what I mean? So you got to think about Moses' heart. 10 years, he's still kind of, he's still rocking with this man. So he must know something we don't. <laughs> And in those days, Moses was feeding the flock of Rehuel, the Midianite, his father-in-law, all right? And with his stick, with his crystal staff, which he took from his father-in-law, was in his hand. And it came to pass one day that the kid of goats, so some goats strayed from the flock, and Moshe pursued it, and it came to a mountain of Hawa, to Horeb, Horeb. And when he came to Horeb, Hawa appeared there unto him in the bush. So now Moses was in jail for 10 years. He's sick. He's 76 years old by now. So if Moses is 76 years old when this is happening according to the book of Joshua. 76 when he's seeing the burning bush. 
Alright, so Hawa appeared there unto him in a bush, and he found the bush burning with fire. But the fire had no power over the bush to consume it. And Moshe was greatly astonished at this sight, wherefore the bush was not consumed. And he approached to see this mighty thing. And Hawa called unto Moshe out of the fire, and commanded him to go down to Mitzrayim, to Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, to send the children of Israel from his service. And Hawa said unto Moses, Go, return to Mitzrayim, for all those men who sought your life are dead, and you shall speak unto Pharaoh to send forth the children of Israel from his hand, from his land. And Hawa showed him to do signs and wonders to in Mitzrayim before the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of his subjects, in order that they might believe that Hawa had sent him. So Hawa showed him. So he had to go through some type of training process. I mean, he was shown how to do this. You know? Now he knows, now he's aware. So now he's initiated. Right? Now you got an initiated Moses who knows how to do these signs and wonders with his crystal staff. Let's go. And Moses hearkened to Hawa, all that Hawa had commanded. And he returned to his father-in-law and told him the thing. And Rebuel said to him, go in peace. And Moses rose up to go to Mitzrayim. And he took his woman and sons with him. And he was at an inn in the road. And an angel of Hawa came down, or dragon of Hawa. Let's get it. An angel of Hawa came down and sought an occasion against him. And he wished to kill him on account of his firstborn son, because he had not circumcised him, man, and had transgressed the covenant which Hawa had made with Abraham. For Moshe had hearkened to the words of his father-in-law, which he had spoken to him, not to circumcise his firstborn, therefore he circumcised him not. And Zipporah saw the angel of Hawa seeking an occasion against Moshe, and she knew that this thing was owing to his not having circumcised her son Gershon. And Zipporah hastened and took, a, took of the sharp rock stones that were left there, and she circumcised her son. That's cold work right there. That's cold work right there. For real, for real. For real, for real. So she took a rock. I'm going to leave that to y'all. Let's go. It's cold work right there, man. And she circumcised her son and delivered her man and her son from the hand of the angel or Drakan of Hawa. And Aaron, the son of Amram, the brother of Moshe was in Mitzrayim walking at the riverside at that day. And Hawa appeared to him. So now Mo Aaron gets an appearance and said to him, Go now towards Moshe in the wilderness. And he went and met him in the mountain of Elohim. And he kissed him. And Aaron lifted up his eyes and saw Zippor, the woman of Moshe, and her children. And he said unto Moshe, who are these unto you? And Moshe said unto him, They are my woman and my sons. Alright, so Aaron is now going to meet up with Moses, and this is his bro. Now, he ain't probably seen him in 50 years. I don't know. So, Aaron had to lift up his eyes, you know what I mean, in order to even, you know what I mean, look. And Aaron lifted up his eyes, saw Zipporah and the woman of Moshe and her children. He's like, whoa. You got a whole family, so this was a family meeting pretty much for the first time, all right? They are my woman and my sons, which Hawa gave to me and Midian. And the thing grieved Aaron on account of the woman and her children. And Aaron said to Moshe, send away the woman and her children that we may go to her father's house. And Moshe hearkened to the words of Aaron and did so. And Zipporah returned with her children, and they went to the house of Reuel, and remained there until the time arrived when Hawa had visited his people and brought them forth from Mitzrayim from the hand of Pharaoh. And, Mo and Moses and Aaron came to Mitzrayim to the community of the children of Israel. And they spoke to them all the words of Hawa, and the people rejoiced in exceeding great rejoicing. And Moshe and Aaron rose up early on the next day. And they went to the house of Pharaoh, and they took in their hands the stick of Hawa. Now we're back to the crystal staff. 
And when they came to the king's gate, two young lions were confined there with rock, with iron instruments, and no person went out or came in from before them, unless those whom the king ordered to come. When the conjurers came and withdrew the lions by their incantations, magic, and thus brought them to the king, and Moshe hastened and lifted up the stick upon the lions, and he loosened them. And Moshe and Aaron came into the king's house, and the king also came with them in joy, and they followed them and rejoiced, as a dog rejoices over his master when he comes from the field. And when Pharaoh saw this thing, he was astonished at it, and he was greatly terrified at the report. So you might not have heard the story, but Moses tamed these lions right quick with his staff. They're over there jumping around like dogs. They're supposed to be ferocious lions, you know, but now they're rejoicing over his master like a, like a dog rejoices over his master when he comes from the field. Verse 24. And when Pharaoh saw this thing, he was astonished at it, and he was greatly terrified at this report. For their appearance was like the appearance of the children of Elohim. And Pharaoh saw, said to Moses, What do you require? And they answered him, saying, Hawa of the Hebrews has sent us to you. All right, so this is Moses and Aaron rolling up on Pharaoh, and their appearance is like angels. The countenance, the glow, they had to the glow, right? The last dragon, they had to the glow. And their appearance was like the children of Hawaii, the, you know what I mean? Just like the angels, right? The Drakan flow. And Pharaoh said to Moses, what do you require? And they said to him, Hawaii of the Hebrews has sent us to you. Send forth my people that they may serve me. And when Pharaoh heard these words, he was greatly terrified before them. And he said to them, go today and come back to me tomorrow. And they did according to the word of the king. And when they had gone, Pharaoh sent for Balaam the magician and to Janus and Jambres, his sons, to all the magicians and conjurers and counselors which belonged to the king. And they all came and sat before the king. And the king told them all the words which Moshe and his brother Aaron had spoken to him, and the magician said to the king, But how, how came the men to you on account of the lions which were confined at the gate? And the king said, Because they lifted up their rod against the lions and loosened them, and came to me. And the lions also rejoiced at them, as a dog rejoices to meet his master. Verse 30, And Balaam the son of Beor, the magician, answered the king, saying, these are none else than magicians like ourselves. Now therefore send for them and let them come and we will try them. And the king did so. And in the morning Pharaoh sent for Moshe and Aaron to come before the king. And they took the rod of Hawa and came to the king and spoke to him saying, Thus says Hawa of the Hebrews, Send my people that they may serve me. And the king said to them, But who will believe you, that you are the messengers of Hawa, that you come to me by his order? Now therefore give a wonder or sign in the matter, and then the words which you speak will be believed. And Aaron hastened and threw the rod out of the hand, out of his hand, before Pharaoh. So here comes Aaron. Aaron has the staff, so they're sharing the staff, right? Sometimes Moses got it. Sometimes Aaron got it. Let's go. <clears throat> Verse 36, And Aaron hastened and threw the rod out of his hand before Pharaoh and before his servants, and the rod turned into a serpent or a dragon. You think it turned into a snake or you think it turned into a dragon? Let's keep reading the story. And the sorcerers saw this, and they cast each man his rod upon the ground, and they became serpents. Which one? And the serpents of Aaron's rod lifted up its head, opened its mouth to swallow the rods of the magicians. And Balaam the magician answered and said, This thing has been from the days of old, that a serpent should swallow its fellow, and that living things devour each other. Now therefore restore it to a rod as it was at first. 
and we will also restore our rods as they were at first. And if your rod shall swallow our rod, then, then shall we know that the Ruach, Hawa, is in you. And if not, you are only an artificer, artificer like ourselves. And Aaron hastened and stretched forth his hand and caught hold of the serpent's tail. And it became a rod in his hand, and the sorcerers did the like with their rods. And they got hold, each man, of the tail of his serpent. And they became rods as, as at first. And when they were restored to rods, the rod of Aaron swallowed up their rod. And when the king saw this, he ordered the sephir of records that related to the kings of Moshe. The sephirs of records, the book of the records. Now, this is the second time we heard of this book. We read another story about Jacob's burial and how Esau was trying to stop Jacob from being buried in Hebron in this cave. And you go get the drop, man. We had a whole drop on the cave. And it's actually the same cave with the same name. It's in Memphis, all right? Memphis, Tennessee. All right? They call it this crystal cave, right? So there's these records that I think Neptali had to run back home to Egypt to get. And there were like three different books of records. So let's keep going. And when the king saw this, he ordered that the sephir of records that related to the kings of Egypt to be brought. And they brought the sephir of records, the chronicles of the kings of Egypt, in which all the idols of Egypt were inscribed, for they thought of finding therein the name of Hawa, but they found it not. And they're looking for the creator, and they couldn't find it in any of the records in Egypt. Let's go. <laughs> So anyone trying to tell you that your Hawa, your creator, is spinning out of Egypt, it's, no, <laughs> it's a straight up fool. Anybody trying to tell you that your records are spinning out of Mitzrayim is a fool, because Mitzrayim is coming out of Atlantis, and the Khan dynasty predates Atlantis. Mu predates Atlantis, and you come from the ancient seed, the original Negro Naga. Don't let nobody tell you that you're spinning out of a hijack. Egypt spun out of a hijack. Egypt spun out of Atlantis. Atlantis hijacked America. Let's get it. Don't be, uh, you know, caught in the web of a fool when you can read in Jashir, you can put it together yourself, but you get more substantiated evidence the further you go. I mean, when you talk about not killing, not stealing, you know what I'm saying? You can talk about basic rules of engagement. You know, people can share different things. They can talk about my eye, you know what I mean? All these, but when it comes down to the solid of the engagement, you're talking about the picto, you're talking about the paleo, you're talking about the vibration. Even before you got anything written, remember Thoth is who brought you writing to confuse you in the first place. Before you needed writing, you had your vibration, you had your law, your law is vibration. You don't need anything written to know not to kill and not to steal. The only time you need somebody to write it down on a tablet to tell you not to kill and steal is when you're in beast mode. When you're in beast mode, somebody gotta say, come on, man, can you please not kill that man? Can you please not steal over there? Can you please stop putting another power before the creator of the world, man? All right, can you please not put another power before you? Because when you know your origin, when you hijack, you know what I'm saying, you're not just hijacking the creator, man, by doing something else or, or, or putting another power, another energy before your energy, you're hijacking yourself. And there's only one way to go from that when you're disconnected from your source. You're in your mind, you're in your ideology, but you're not in your source. You're going through the motions, you feel righteous because you got an abstract of righteousness, but the concrete is within you. That's your inner dragon. That's your body. You think you're looking at me? Nah, man. My, my etheric body is much more. You know what I'm saying? My dragon body is much more. You just don't see it. But when you come back to life, when you come back in your grid, you see the fullness. Not just what you can pick up from the light spectrum, but the fullness. Not just what you see in the mirror. <laughs> Objects might be closer than they appear. Let's get it. We're almost out of here.
So they're looking through all these books, right? The kings of Egypt, which all the idols of Egypt were inscribed, for they thought of finding therein the name of Hawa, but they found it not. And Pharaoh said to Moshe and Aaron, Behold, I have not found the name of your Hawa written in this sephir, in this book. And his name I know not. And the counselors and wise men answered the king, We have heard that the creator of the Hebrews is a son, is a son of the wise, the son of the ancient kings. <laughs> and Pharaoh turned to Moshe and Aaron and said to them, I know not Hawa, whom you have declared, neither will I send his people. And they answered and said to the king, Hawa, Hawa of Elohim is his name. And he proclaimed his name over us from the days of our ancestors and sent us, saying, Go to Pharaoh and say unto him, Send my people, that they may serve me. Now therefore send us, that we may take a journey for three days in the wilderness, and there, and there may sacrifice, and there may sacrifice to him. For from the days of our going down to Egypt, he has not taken from our hands either burnt offering, oblation, or sacrifice. From the days of their captivity, Mosiah hasn't even taken it from them. I don't, I don't even want it. Y'all go to timeout, man. Y'all, I ain't even looking at y'all right. I don't even want it. But now, when the Mosiah accepts those incense, right? He ain't talking about burning meat, man. He ain't talking about burning meat. <laughs> When the Most High accepts those herbs, you know what I mean, those those incense, that sweet, savory, you know, herbal, you know what I'm saying, incense, you know what I mean, then you know that, you know, it's a, uh, it's all good, it's all good. Most High's accepting, you know what I'm saying, these uh, you know, beautiful aroma. He he's accepting this vibration. He's he's accepting our covenant. You know what I mean? It's a great thing. But this didn't happen while they were in captivity. What happened? Verse 48, now therefore send us that we may take a journey for three days in the wilderness and there may sacrifice to him. For from the days of our going down to Mitzrayim, he has not taken from our hands either burnt offering, oblation, sacrifice. And if you will not send us, his anger will be kindled against us. <clears throat> his anger will be kindled against you. And he will smite Mitzrayim either with the plague or with the sword. And Pharaoh said to them, Tell me now his power and his might. And they said to him, He created the heavens and the earth, the seas and all the fishes. He formed the light, created the darkness, caused rain upon the earth and watered it, and made the herbage, the herbage, the herbs and grass to sprout. He created man and beast and the animals of the forest, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and by his mouth they live and die. Surely he created you in your mother's womb and put into you the breath of life, reared you and placed you upon the royal throne of Egypt. They're breaking it down to the Pharaoh. And he would take your breath and soul from you, return you to the ground whence you were taken. And the anger of the king was kindled at their words and he said to them, but who amongst all the gods of nations can do this? My river is my own i have made it for myself and he drove them from him and he ordered the labor upon israel to be more severe than it was yesterday and be yesterday and before and moshe went out from the king's presence and they saw the children of israel in an evil condition for the taskmasters taskmasters or slave masters had made their labor exceedingly heavy slave masters had made their labor exceedingly heavy. Does that sound familiar? Indian? Let's go. Verse 54, we're going we gonna to make our dismount here. Hawa. And Moshe returned to Hawa and said, Why have you ill-treated your people? For since I came to speak to Pharaoh, what you, what you did, sent, what did you send me for? He has exceedingly ill-used, ill-used the children of Israel. And Hawa said to Moses, Behold, you will see with an outstretched hand 
and heavy plagues, Pharaoh will send the children of Israel from the land. Pharaoh will send the children of Israel from the land. Pharaoh will send the children of Israel from their captivity. And Moshe and Aaron dwelt among their brethren, the children of Israel in Egypt. And as for the children of Israel, the Egyptians embittered their lives with heavy work with which they imposed upon them. And we're going to pick it up in verse 80, man. Or excuse me, chapter 80. And at the end of two years, Hawa again sent Moshe to Pharaoh to bring forth the children of Israel and to send them out of the land of Egypt. And Moshe went and came to the house of Pharaoh, and he spoke to him the words of Hawa who had sent him. But Pharaoh would not hearken to the voice of Hawa. And Hawa rose, aroused his might in Egypt upon Pharaoh and his subjects. And Hawa smote Pharaoh and his people with very great and sore plagues. Man, we right there. Chapter 80. Get that at Sephora, man. Great translation. Love to size me and my. I got to say that, man. Aha, man. Aha, man. Keep that love flowing. Keep the rivers flowing, man. Keep renewing within yourself. Start here. Start here, man. Don't care about what nobody say. Don't care about no, what nobody think of you or what you this, man. Let everybody think you crazy. This is the time to be crazy. If you're going to be crazy, you've earned this shit, man. Even they say in their books, man, if we found these people even remotely in order, if after all this time, all these jam-ups, all these hijacks, these people are even remotely in order, man, that's a miracle, man. That's a sign that Hawaii is real, that these people could sustain all this treachery, all this betrayal from their own brothers, all this physical strain and ailments, man. All this sorcery and necromancy being flipped upside down. They lost their orientation, lost their land. They don't even know where they are, but you know what? They're still, we can still have a conversation. The fact that me and you can have this conversation, all praise a while. And that let you know it's real and we ain't stopping. We ain't going nowhere. We firm, fixing, and movable. Stay up, suit up, choose up.